I want you to write down the first point is that everything starts with compassion. Everything starts with compassion. The Bible says Jesus looked at the crowd. He was moved with compassion. Disciples looked at the crowd and they saw inconvenience because they were complacent, because they were living in comfort and I think we all love comfort. There's nothing wrong with comfort as long as the comfort does not conflict with compassion. As long as my comfort doesn't push me out of compassion, if I can keep compassion alive, there's nothing wrong with comfort. But if comfort is my goal, if comfort is my aim, if comfort is what I'm praying for, and a lot of our prayers, if you were really, really careful, it's really for comfort. There's nothing wrong with being completely healed and being free from everything and having financial breakthrough and having that boy to be your husband and being married. There's not, that's all praise God. Jesus came to give us life and more abundantly. But if every single prayer aims to help me feel more comfortable in life, instead of help me to tap into a compassion vein that is inside of me, deposited by the Holy Spirit, sooner or later we'll stand before God with everything that did not matter at the day of our death. And give an account for what? For that which does not matter when you have five minutes to live. You know, my uncle passed away a week ago. He was the guy who helped to start our church. I call him a Russian Rambo. This guy was so brutal, unbelievable in faith and then outside of faith. He used to cut the lawnmower, flip the lawnmower, didn't turn it off, went to fix the lawnmower, cut his own finger while trying to clean the lawnmower in the church. Rambo. It's full of faith. I mean, this, this man evangelized everywhere just, just to very, I mean, you look at him physically, you'll be intimidated. I it was the day before he passed away in his, in his bed. He starts seeing angels. He's standing there, you know, and he, he just built a nice house. And none of this stuff matters. His business, seven children. And he says, I feel, I see rain. He barely can speak because the, the, we prayed against the, he had cancer that quickly developed and he wasn't able, he lost so much weight, he wasn't able to even speak but, but his eyes were full of fire and I'm looking at that and I'm like, that's exactly what I'm going to come into. Everything I work for today, everything I worry for today, when I come to that point and I will because statistics says 10 out of 10 people will come there, it won't matter. The only thing that matters today is how you live for the call of God. The purpose of God and my life was literally just kind of shaken up once again though I just turned 30 to live with the perspective my life will come to an end and the color of the church's carpet will not matter at that day and the make of my car and the brand of the clothes I wear and what I eat and who I hang out with and how many followers you have who likes or doesn't like your statuses who snapped you back or who doesn't snap you back all of these things will matter not what will matter is how close did you live to the purposes and the call of God in your life can somebody shout amen everything starts with compassion compassion is when you begin to feel that in your heart you know many of us we are like that guy who went fishing one day and then uh, he saw all the small fish and threw the small fish back into the sea and the other guy noticed that he is uh, i'm sorry he threw all the big fish out into the sea and kept all the small fish so the other fisherman noticed that he came to him he said hey could you could, could you explain to me what is this little thing that you're doing you're throwing the big fish out and then you're keeping the small fish in he says it's a very simple solution in the home i have a small frying pan any fish that doesn't fit the frying pan i throw it away and that's exactly how many of us live. We have this small frying pan of complacency and compassion, of, of com complacency and comfort. And anything that doesn't fit that portfolio, we just throw it away. When we hear the challenge, you know, join the group, you're like, eh, doesn't fit my frying pan. When you hear the challenge, hey, become a home group leader. What? Why would you want to do that? Out of that. Anything, come to Tuesday prayer. Well, that's boring out of that and anything that doesn't fit the small little religious thinking thinking all about me frying pan guess what we do we throw it out so when Jesus says keep the multitudes disciples says no why would you want to do that they're annoying they're burdensome they're inconvenience we already had enough of them get rid of them Jesus I want to challenge each one of us today allow the Holy Spirit to stretch your compassion just a little bit don't do those prayers God wreck me completely that's not gonna happen you lived your life selfishly for 25 years being religious. We think in one minute you're going to become selfless Mother Teresa? Of course not. But if you come and say, God, you make me a little bit more compassionate this week. God, make me go at least to one prayer meeting. 
God help me to join one group help me God begin to stretch my heart like a rubber band so that my heart will begin to feel that compassion I remember I heard a story of one man in Australia who lived by the cliff for a very long time with him and his wife and I think they have a picture of that and so one day he lived at this uh, cliff called the gap and in this clip there he started to notice people coming to the cliff and disappearing he didn't realize what was going on until it dawned on him that he started to search that found out that for hundreds of years this cliff has been known for the most suicides that happened in Australia he lived right by that cliff and one day he saw a person standing on the edge of the cliff he decided to come and just see and this was the first time he witnessed a suicide in his own eyes he said it wrecked me so much that I have people coming on the cliff every single day or every single week and they commit suicide and I live here him and his wife says you know we're not counselors we're not very religious people but there's something we can do you know what he started to do he started to go on the edge of the cliff when he saw some people and he does did something very simple he says what is your name after they will say their name he said he says I have some warm tea in my house and some cookies I would love if you can come and I don't have anybody to share cookies with and warm tea could you come to my house he would bribe people with cookies and tea he's 80 something years of age he saved 160 people with cookies and tea what could you do with the power of the love of Jesus what could you do with the power and the compassion of Jesus Christ you know what changed that man is one day he looked at that and he saw people throwing themselves off of the cliff and he says you know what I may not be able to save the world but I can try to save one and it's a compassion that begins to move his heart and it's a compassion that can move your heart you may not be able to save Vancouver but you can save the area you can save the people God places in your sphere of influence by simply starting to care when the person in the lunch sits by themselves because they moved new into town and you got your little gang you got your little squad that you're hanging out all the time and you're so cool and you're so trendy and you guys are so popular and you get you get your little slang that you have going on what would happen if that person who stands on their own cliff right now you will leave your little squad at least once a week go sit beside that person and say what is your name are you new in school you will see how God will begin to use you to save people and change people's lives. I want to challenge each one of you today in your sphere of influence. Begin to ask God to stretch your heart just a little bit more in the area of compassion. I heard a story this happened in Asia in China where another guy who there's this famous bridge in China that is known also for the suicides where the most people commit suicides over a thousand people committed suicide in the last I think 200 years in this kind of a city and this man first time he saw a person committing suicide he was driving on this highway and there's four different lanes that's passing by and he saw a lady that was going over the rail he stopped the car ran through the cars almost got run over and quickly grabbed her as she was falling down and pulled her back and now he goes there every weekend every weekend and stands there waiting for people that's his life now I think over a hundred something people have been rescued from committing suicide because a man he wasn't even a, he's not even a Christian just cares that's it I want to challenge each one of us today that you begin to care that you begin to have compassion that you begin to be concerned for the people in your school for people who don't know Jesus in Jesus name can somebody shout amen